is good fam? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Kyler and today I'm going to be installing a charge pipe in my 2018 BMW 340i courtesy of VRSF. So big shout out to VRSF for sponsoring my channel and the build. So I'll go ahead and post a link in the description below to the charge pipe for your convenience. Before we get started on the install process, I just wanted to go over a quick background of the B58 engine and the charge pipe and you know pretty much like what it does. Unlike the B58's predecessor, the N55, the B58 doesn't utilize a front mount intercooler and instead has its charge air cooler integrated into the intake plenum. And this is basically an indirect coolant based charge air cooling or like water to air cooling system. So basically instead of a front mount intercooler down here in the front of the car, we just have a radiator and then the charge air cooler is right here. Air comes in here through into the intake system and that is where the air is cooled and also filtered right into the turbo. So heated charge air makes its way from the turbo then through the charge pipe here and then into the charge air cooler which sends cooled charge air into the combustion chamber. All right, so first step is you want to take your engine cover off if you have one and then I'm going to go ahead and remove my air box so this will be pretty similar to the stock air box, but I'm gonna go ahead and remove this uh, air mass flow sensor right here. Just remove this connection, and then we'll go ahead and remove the box. So on the stock box, it's really just a one clamp, and you wanna pull it out from the grommets, but we'll go ahead and remove this connection first, and you just wanna be very careful with this plastic piece right here, because it comes out pretty easily, or it can. And then with this connection, you just kinda of wanna wiggle it up and out of place push down right here on the tab and then we can just set that out of the way right here. So now I'm just going to remove some of these screws on my airbox and go ahead and get this off. Unfortunately I screwed myself when I installed this intake and I stripped the screw that goes into the heat shield right here. So. Now I have to remove basically the entire uh, pipe right here. So I went ahead and loosened this. This can come off like that. And then there's another bolt down here I need to remove. And then I'll just take the whole thing out at once. But if you have a stalker box, it'll be pretty easy. It's simple. I'm able to break this intake free. So now I can remove this and then we have a lot better access to our charge pipe. All right, so these knurled plugs are just a pain in the butt. So I went ahead and disconnected this one first, even though you don't have to, but it kind of makes it easier just to set this one out of the way here, like so. And then we can have better access to that one. But even with that, I still can't Get it off it's really tough so i'm just going to go ahead and disconnect this connection down here this electrical connection and then remove the c-clip and just try to take off the inlet and then hopefully have more wiggle room to play around with this connection all right quick update on the c-clip so i was able to pry it up with this pick tool and then use one of these plastic trim remover tools to go ahead and get under there fully and pull it up. So now I just need to remove it, take it out completely. Dear Lord, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Finally able to get this turbo inlet out. These plugs are a pain, but that worked with me uh, removing the turbo inlet from the turbo itself and then being able to wiggle this one connection out. So that actually made it easier, and I recommend you probably do the same if you're doing this DIY. All right, so now after we've dealt with that inlet pipe, I'm gonna go ahead and remove these three screws from the charge pipe. Should be a T27. We'll go ahead and remove these, and then follow up by removing the electrical connections right here. Just take a little flathead screwdriver, pry up, Right there, and then you can just squeeze it, wiggle that off, go to the side. Same thing right here. Just wanna 
pry up on it with the clamp. Same thing, squeeze and wiggle. There we go, put that to the side. And we are good there. Now we can go back to the C-clip on the bottom of the charge pipe. All right, so at the bottom of the charge pipe, you can see it has a plastic covering over the C-clip. So we'll just have to put in a little flathead screwdriver, kind of break that clip uh, just so we can get the C-clip off. So basically what you wanna do is put your flathead screwdriver underneath and pry up and then that clip will become loose and it's like broken off basically. And then you can just pull it off the rest of it. So just like that, pretty simple. Now we can stick our pick tool again under that C-clip and remove that. And we can take out this charge pipe. There we go. Not super easy, but <laughs> we got it. So there will be another connection from the charge pipe connecting on to one of these hoses down here. So you just want to make note of that and you'll have to pretty much finagle it off this hose down here. This is what I was talking about. So you just kind of want to stick maybe a little flathead screwdriver under there, pull these apart like so, and then you'll be able to break this free from the tube. And now we can just go ahead and pull the charge pipe out. We can just slide it through there. Oh. Do not drop your clip. It just came off and I almost completely dropped it. So here it is. Set that to the side. Now I can pull this guy out. Here is our OEM charge pipe. <laughs> My gloves are hilarious. All right, now we need to go ahead and remove this sensor and this sensor. So this will be a T20. Just go ahead and remove that. Just like so. Be careful with the sensor. There's gonna be a little bit of resistance in there. We just want to pull straight out. Careful with that, put that to the side. And then this one will just be done by hand. Boom. All right, yep, just be careful pulling these out. You want to pull them straight out. And we'll go ahead and transfer these to the new charge pipe. All right, so I actually had a bit more trouble getting this to thread into this because you know it's coming out of plastic threads and now it's going into a metal thread. So just be very careful. Make sure you, because it gave me a lot of resistance too and it didn't look like it was going in straight at first. So what I did is I backed it out. I put a little dab of WD-40 just to add a little extra lubrication and I got it tight and to where it looks like it's going on straight. And then I'll take my 17 millimeter little socket right here. And since it's giving me so much resistance, I'm able to screw it in like that and get it in the rest of the way. But yeah, you just wanna be super careful with this part because I'm not sure how much this sensor costs and I don't wanna find out. <laughs> so I'll just go ahead and get this in the rest of the way. We'll make sure to get it really snug just because I don't want any boost leaks. All right, that's pretty snug there. I think we're good. All right, so we got both sensors in and you don't want to reuse the T20 bolt. You want to use the one that BRSF provided with the washer as well. And this is just a five millimeter Allen. So just go ahead and screw that in. You can work on installing the lower portion of the charge pipe. As you can see, rubber gasket is in. I transferred it from the old charge pipe so now we are good just go ahead and overlay the c-clip onto it and that way when we push it in 
once it's already in, we can just go ahead and push down on the C-clip. That way we don't have to get in there after the fact that we've already put it on. So just like this, we have it over to the side, the C-clip. So we'll put it on and then we can just rotate it and then it should snap right into place. All right, you wanna make sure that goes in all the way over the connection right there. Rotate our C-clip until you hear it click into place. There we go. And yeah, that is on, that is secured. We can go ahead and just plug this connection back in. Make sure you hear that audible click. I went ahead and slid over our clamp and then our rubber piece as well. And now we can take second half of the charge pipe and you just wanna make sure that these are pointing towards you just to make it easy for yourself. And of course it goes from smaller to bigger and then this clamp is bigger as well. So now we'll go ahead and put that up here. Slide it in the rest of the way. And this part does need to go underneath. So we're just wiggling it in, making it work, lining up these screw holes down here. We also want to look over on this side, make sure that we're all seated properly. So we got it good enough. I'm gonna go ahead and start threading these screws in by hand. So once you get each screw threaded in by hand, then you can take your ratchet with your T27 and then screw each one in in equal increments. So that way you don't screw one in fully. You do each one in equal amount of force. That way the charge pipe sits on the throttle body correctly and you don't have any issues. Push back in on our electrical connections. Just make sure you hear that audible click. And let our tabs go back into place. We're good there. Now I can go ahead and tighten down these clamps. All right, so we got the clamps all bolted down. It's a 10 millimeter. And the most important part is just to make sure that the VRSF logo is facing outwards. Just to let everyone know what we're messing with. <laughs> it feels so much better just to ditch that BMW plastic and just have a nice metal charge pipe in here. So now we just need to put the intake back in and we'll be good to go. First startup, let's see if we put everything back together correctly. <laughs> No codes. So after I finished the charge pipe install, I went for a drive and found this like blade of grass between the thumbs whistle <laughs> under like heavy boost. And that was just weird. I knew something was loose or not fully tightened. So that always sucks, man. Like you could work all day installing a part and you go for a test drive or whatever and it just doesn't work. <laughs> that is the worst. So when something like that happens, all you can do really is just go back to the drawing board, start taking things apart again, looking at all your connections and making sure everything is secure. Oof. 
Thank God. Got the bolt. If you're ever working on your car, make sure you have one of these <laughs> just in case. I can't believe this snapped. It's crazy. So two of the main culprits for that noise are mainly the clamps and the coupler and then possibly the charge pipe connection to the turbo. However, in my case, I actually noticed that my intake wasn't fully seated on the turbo inlet pipe. So I think that could have caused an issue. And then also my clamp situation with the coupler probably wasn't uh, situated the best. So I probably had the coupler a little lower than it should have been. So I needed the coupler to sit up higher so I could get more clamp on the upper charge pipe. And I fixed that, ended up solving my issue. But as you guys saw, Unfortunately, when I was loosening and tightening multiple revisions, uh, the top cup or the top clamp just broke after I tightened it way too much. <laughs> so just try to get it right the first time and you probably won't run into that issue like I did. And there's nothing bad about VRSF and their parts. All their parts for this charge pipe install are super high quality. And after I adjusted the clamp and the intake fitting on the turbo inlet, the car is perfect, it sounds awesome, it sounds amazing, and it just feels so much better having an aluminum charge pipe in there opposed to the BMW plastic. You know, you just feel better about driving the car. You know, the car just feels like more stout, I guess. <laughs> and you don't have that worry about that charge pipe ever cracking uh, when you're pushing a large amount of boost or higher boost than stock. So I apologize guys, my, my nose is killing me. <laughs> my allergies are just acting up like crazy right now, but all good otherwise. Also, I do want to note this will probably be a lot easier for you if you have the stock airbox on the car, or maybe it's a good idea to go ahead and buy a charge pipe and an intake together. That way you can do both of them at the same time and really enhance the turbo sounds and just the motor in general. So I don't know if it's placebo effect, but I mean, I do feel a little bit more peppiness on the throttle uh, for with having the charge pipe installed. So that's awesome. And also the turbo noise is a little bit more enhanced. You know, you can hear it a little bit more. It's nothing crazy, but definitely adds to the sound and performance of the vehicle. So I'm stoked I got the charge pipe installed, got that taken care of, and it's properly situated, properly seated on every component. I'm super stoked. So make sure you hit up BRSF. I'll leave a link in the description for the charge pipe and all their other products. So go ahead and check them out. Make sure you give this video a like, hit subscribe, to stay tuned in for future content, and I'll catch you all on the next one. Peace out.